Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, amma ba'd. Habita fillah, it's very difficult and very important to choose very carefully when looking for a spouse. And this is for men and women. And in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know the characteristics that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam recommended. And I just wanted to read a couple of ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this important matter in choosing a spouse. In the first hadith, is a hadith of uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala who said, uh, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, O young men, those of you who can support a wife should marry, for it controls the gaze and preserves one from immorality, and whoever cannot marry should fast, for it is a means of reducing the sexual desire. And I think it's very well understood, the meaning of this hadith, and we explained it. You can find it uh, on my channel with the the chapter of uh, Nikah. The whole Buluva Maram, all of it is there. So you can listen if you have the patience to go through hours of Durus, explaining it in depth from Ben Uthaymin's explanation. Mm -hmm. But in general, this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, illustrates for us the hukum, the ruling with regards to marriage in general, and especially more specifically those who have high desires, especially the young men. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ya ma'ashara ma shabab, man istata'a minkum alba'a filiyatazawaj. O youth, those amongst you who are able to marry, then marry. Uh, the, <clears throat> and and here, the ulama they differ over the meaning of ba'a. Al ba'a refers to some of the scholars. They mention that it refers to the physical, meaning even the sexual ability to be able to marry. And some mention that it's talking about the financial ability. And really, there's and Allah knows best. There's no real ta'arud there. There's no real uh, contradiction there. That all of them are important. To be able to marry and fulfill one another's needs and rights and help and support and assist one another. So it's very important uh, regarding the hukum. The next hadith narrated uh, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa praised Allah, extolled him and said, Yet I pray and sleep, I fast and break my fast, and I marry women. He who is displeased with my sunnah is not my follower. So it also encourages us to marry. And that it was from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Narrated Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to command us to marry and sternly forbid celibacy. Because we know the mafasi, we know the difficulties, especially of those of us who grew up in Western societies. And moreover, those of us who came to Islam and had previous experiences uh, prior to uh, being Islam, Islamically married, or just being in, as we say, our jahiliyyah, that many of us, we come from various backgrounds, and some of us has rough jahiliyyah, many relationships. Some of the women, they come and they have been through so much. Some of the men, they come through and they've been through so much. All kind of uh, activities, sometimes deviant activities, whatever the case may be, it is difficult for a lot of us to remain uh, single. So this shows the hajjah that we have. Uh, so in this hadith, uh, the Prophet والسلام, said, used to command us to marry and sternly forbid celibacy and say, marry women who are beloved, uh, prolific in bearing children, for I shall outnumber the prophets for you on the day of resurrection. Reported by Ahmed and Ibn Hibban, graded it as sahih. The aforesaid hadith has a supporting uh, narration reported by Abu Dawood and Nisai Ibn Hibban from... Ma'ku ibn Yasar's hadith. So this also shows us that one of the characteristics that is mentioned by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a woman who is perhaps uh, young and able to bear children, especially for those who don't have children or want, want more children, whatever the case may be, that this is also from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Likewise, to not leave out sisters that have gotten older, uh, you know, and this is, uh, you know, or men, I guess, that have gotten older, but uh, but the women that may not uh, bear children anymore or, you know, it may become more hazardous or, or harmful to them to bear at an older age, whatever the case may be, that all of our sisters need to be married and taken care of 
uh, because who else is going to take care of them? Of course, the Shepan will if the men don't step up and take care of the women. So it's very important to, again, uh, strive to not be uh, single and alone. Of course, there's companionship. There's so many benefits of marriage. It's, it's, I think it goes without saying in a good marriage. We don't want more disastrous marriages. Wallahu musta'an. Uh, narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a woman is married for four qualities, for her wealth, her family status, her beauty, and her religion. So get the religious one and prosper. Mutafakun uh, alayhi with the rest of uh, as uh, uh In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said that a woman is married for four qualities, her wealth, Maybe she's a wealthy woman, and this takes care of the difficulty that a man may have in caring for her. Maybe the man is poor, whatever the case may be. Or it could be a man who has more than one wife, more than one family, and he has difficulty in meeting the needs. But the woman just wants to be married, and she has her own means. She doesn't need anything, doesn't require maintenance. So this is between those spouses to determine what is uh, best for their particular situation. Her family status, the Messenger وسلم, also said, you know, especially for the Arabs, that was important to them, family status. We, in our time, we don't, uh, you know, depending on the culture and so forth, people have different uh, uh, views about family status and tribal tribes. We don't have tribes in a lot of Western countries except for those people who came to those countries from other countries, Pakistan, Afghanistan, some, uh, you know, various African con countries uh, and what have you in the Arab countries, that they, some of those countries, they still have very strong tribal s structures, so those things are important to them. But family status can also be that, for example, a man may want be an educated man, he may want an educated woman, or vice versa, an educated woman may want an educated man. And this is the case we find, especially we find that many of our women are highly educated, and it's difficult for them to find suitable suitors. So this is uh, something else that a person may be important to a person. Uh, and her beauty. And of course, I will say that this is very, this is emphasized in this time because we live in a time with so many social, uh, with social media and so many distractions. You know, when some of us were coming up, you didn't even have some of these things that exist. Now you have intricate, detailed ways of committing zina online and 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 uh, finding illicit relationship swingers everything everything that we could even imagine uh that is under the sun it's there it's it's there if you want to marry a dog wallahu musta'an it's there it's there in some countries and there's probably a website that facilitates it wallahu musta'an so the point is is there's kathra to shahwat there's kathra to shubahat and difficulty things that people face and with that being the case the point was is that beauty beauty is very important so some people are very into physical and many of the men today especially even the women are into physical beauty whatever they find to be physical uh you know uh, attractive to, to them that's very important for some and some it is also that the people are healthy some people they live a healthy lifestyle they want a spouse that lives a similar lifestyle you know, that is healthy, healthy in eating, healthy in taking care of their body, that they're not, uh, you know, a person who is out of shape, whatever the case may be. So some women desire that in a man. They want a man who's strong. Some men even desire that in a woman. They want a woman who takes care of her body, keeps maintains her health and her shape. So these are also reasons, as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. And again, with all the social media and all the images of what a beautiful woman uh, should be like, According to the media, according to propaganda, according to Hollywood, according, according, according to all these various standards that are put out there, and we're bombarded by that, then it's very important to, uh, because people are turned out, so to speak, that they find someone that they are attracted to. That's very important, and I will emphasize that because I know many situations of brothers who have went to various countries, they married women from di different countries, you know, from America, the brothers coming from America, Marian sisters in Yemen, Mary sisters in different places, and they really weren't pleased. They just wanted a woman. She was good in religion. She memorized the Quran. She has this. She has this. She has this. But ultimately, there is no cultural bonds between them, 
and there may not even be a physical bond or it may go away very quickly. So it's very important to have a balance there to find someone who does attract you, especially if you have that experience of Jahiliya. I think those are important things to look at, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And this is speaking from the experience that we've seen with countless marriages, unfortunately, failing and, and other issues that have arisen in our ummah. Uh, and then the last thing the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned was, so get the religious one, so this and, and prosper. So, of course, the deen will prosper. But again, our iman fluctuates. Sometimes we're in high iman, sometimes we're in low iman. So there's no doubt that there's a balance there because when a man... Or, or perhaps a woman, but men tend to be more materialistic or more superficial, I should say, looking at the outward appearance, that when he has a woman who he feels is all that in looks, that even if her dean is weak, the men tend to compensate. They can say, well, she, you know, look at what I, you know, he, he's pleased with that. So that helps to calm his nefs down. Whereas women tend to be less like this, but some women are, are like that as well. So it's very important to try to have a balance. That's very important in choosing a spouse. So the reason I did this video is just to uh, talk about something because we have, especially for us that are reverts and coming to Islam in uh, the Western countries, that we face a lot of issues with trying to find good spouses, that uh, finding trustworthy people. The women have difficulty finding trustworthy guardians even because in some of our communities the, even the leadership fail to live up to Islamic standards. Maybe there's a lot of sins in the communities. There's all kind of difficulties that we all face. So one thing I will say first and foremost is it's very important to find someone trustworthy which is easier said than done. But you must strive your best to find someone trustworthy to look out for your affairs if you're a sister or uh, you know, alert local community that can look out for your affairs and also for the sisters to be selective about what they want. Don't compromise. Don't just take any brother. You know, it depends on your situation, but sometimes sisters tend to compromise and brothers tend to abuse that and force and pressure the sisters to get married really quickly. And there's just another divorce and sisters get passed around the community. And this is a dangerous thing that we see. Um, we see it all over the world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and forgive us and guide us, ameen, ya rabbil alameen, and guide our communities, ameen, because we don't have that support. And these are intricate matters. We could write books about all the issues that we face, but I'm just trying to highlight some important things. And for the brothers, likewise, to choose sisters that have some good religion, not just the looks, and she's off the hook. She's showing herself. She's uh, got a, a past that she probably can't part with. Uh, you know, it is important and it is difficult to know that much about one another. Some sisters find out the hard way. They marry a brother. He seems like he's a student of knowledge. He seems like this and this and this. And he's actually a wife beater. He's actually a very abusive individual. So it's important to try to get as much history as possible, which we fail to do time and time again. And likewise, the brothers need to know about the sisters. Is she trustworthy? You know, are you going to go to work and you're going to come home and there's another car, another brother's car outside your home? Well, Lama Stan, these are real scenarios that we know countless stories and we've witnessed countless times of these kind of scenarios, you know, and, and extreme scenarios that I'm not even going to mention. So it's very important to look for someone trustworthy, look for uh, certain attributes if looks is important to you then to be balanced with that you know you maybe you're not you're looking for this tin that you used to have in jahiliya but maybe you need to adjust that uh you know if you can be patient you know it depends on your scenario but you need to have a balance you need to have someone who's trustworthy that's very important and one of the things i remember sitting with sheikh muhammad ibn abdul Wahhab al-aqil many years ago and we asked and we know who he was talking about i was talking to one of our great uh, ulama that's still living uh in medina and he mentioned that uh, an important thing about marriage, because we asked about marital issues and about so forth, and he said it's very important in the marriage to compromise, to be willing to give and take. This is what, so don't be, and I, especially for reverts especially, don't be so much, you read Bukhari, you read Balugh Maram, you read this, it's supposed to be like this, by the book. Okay, we're not saying depart from Kitab Allah, wala sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but don't be so stern because we all, have shortcomings we all do not we all fail to live up to our standards so some people they hold a text over your head and that's very important that you have to realize that it's compromise some women 
they have certain issues. So to enjoy her in her crookedness, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, so you have to enjoy her and not bend her too much. And the bending is what? It's talaq, it's divorce. Likewise, the men, they might have some crookedness, but is it is it something livable? You know, the man, he watches whatever, but he's not watching pornography, hopefully, but he's doing this. You know, he whatever his situation, he might listen to a little music. I'm not saying accept that, but I'm saying that You've got to look at things in the bigger scale and not be so stern about things because we all fail and we all fall short. So I hope that is some beneficial advice and may Allah forgive me for anything I said that was incorrect. But I will say again, a last thing is it is important to compromise to make any marriage work.